Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist called Labs. In previous videos, we talked about Ben's Jones proteins. We talked about urine osmolality, urine specific gravity, urine color, urine appearance, urine odor, urine pH, urine leukocyte stress, urine nitrites, urine ketone bodies, even urine bilirubin and urobilinogen. Let's zoom out for a second. Your serum proteins are albumin and globulin normally they should not show up in the urine but what if they start to show up in the urine that's a bad sign in fact the presence of microalbumins in the urine is the first sign of diabetic nephropathy i.e kidney disease in patients with diabetes please watch the videos in this lab's playlist in order especially my video on urine proteins remember that a good kidney should not let any protein or blood in the urine how about the kidney that lets in lots of protein this is nephrotic syndrome how about blood in the urine nephritic syndrome because because itis means inflammation. This kidney is inflamed and shedding tears of blood. Normally, proteins in your blood should not end up in your urine for two reasons. Number one, your basement membrane's fenestrations or hole are too narrow and the proteins are bigger than the hole, so they should not pass under normal circumstances. Number two, your glomerular basement membrane is negatively charged and the proteins are negatively charged, so they repel each other. And remind me again, your blood is made of plasma and cells. The plasma is water and proteins. The plasma protein proteins are albumin or globulin. Neither one of these should show up in the urine. If a tiny amount of albumin is sneaking by, it's called microalbuminuria. If a tiny amount of globulin is sneaking by, it's called microglobulinuria. And we talked about this in my video on beta-2 microglobulin, you'll find it in my lab's playlist. As for today, we're talking about microalbumin in the urine. The main function of albumin is that it maintains your oncotic pressure. Without albumin, you can develop symptoms of edema. This edema or swelling is pitting edema, dependent, made of transudate, not exudate, and caused by decreased oncotic pressure. Features of nephrotic syndrome are four, high protein in my urea, low protein in my emia. As a result, I get edema and hyper. Hyperlipidemia. This will be overt proteinuria, not just microalbuminuria, this is just too much protein in the urine. But today's video is talking about losing way less than that. And please recall that diabetes can also lead to nephrotic syndrome. The trick is to try to recognize diabetic kidney disease before it becomes something severe as nephrotic syndrome. So don't wait until I'm here losing more than 3,500 milligrams of proteins per day. That's just too much. And don't wait until I'm here showing symptoms. And don't wait until I'm losing macroalbumin or lots of albumin in the urine. Instead, let's try to detect the disease early when it's just microalbumin. So what's the normal? The normal is less than 2 milligrams of albumin per deciliter of urine. Microalbuminuria is anything above 2. If I have microalbumins in the urine, they are not enough to form casts in the urine. And we talked about urine casts in a separate video in this lab playlist. And here is a quick review of urine protein. This is overt proteinuria. When you have more than 8 milligrams per deciliter, usually more than 30 milligrams per deciliter. And since you urinate about 1 liter per day, you multiply the 30 by 10, you get 300. And of course, diabetes can damage the kidney and lead to overt proteinuria. But can we detect it earlier? Yes, we can with urine microalbumin. What's the normal urine microalbumin? Very tiny, less than 2 milligrams of albumin per 1 liter of urine. This is normal. Above that, we call it microalbuminuria. Since the amount of albumin in your urine depends on the hydration status or how much water you drink, let's try to cancel the effect of the hydration, i.e. account for it i.e. figure out a method to measure the microalbumin regardless of whether you drank too much water or too little water. How do you do that? Divide the microalbumin in the urine by creatinine in the urine to get a ratio. Why creatinine? Creatinine is a measure of your urine concentration. This ratio in males should be less than 17 milligrams of microalbumin per gram of creatinine in the urine. In females, it should be less than 25. But hemicosis, why is it lower in males? Because males have a greater muscle mass, which means more creatinine, and creatinine is in the denominator. 
If creatinine goes up, what's going to happen to the ratio? It goes down. So males have a lower ratio because they have more creatinine, because they have more muscle mass, because they have more testosterone on average. Under normal conditions, even if a tiny amount of albumin got filtered through the glomerulus, don't worry, your tubules will reabsorb it back to the blood. The problem happens when you have tons of albumin getting filtered, exceeding the ability of your kidney tubules to reabsorb that albumin. As a result, you get albumin in the urine, hence albuminuria or microalbuminuria. Causes diabetes, of course, which can damage my kidney. In fact, this urine microalbumin can identify diabetic kidney disease five years before the good old routine urine protein test can detect it. That's the whole point of detecting the microalbumin. Early diagnosis, early treatment. And you tell the patient, hey, you better control your blood sugar level. Otherwise, this can progress quickly, causing all kinds of issues. Lucky for you, microalbuminuria usually does not happen until 5 to 10 years after poor glycemic control. The earlier you get your blood sugar under control, the better. Other causes include just insulin resistance, hypertension, myoglobinuria, hemoglobinuria, atherosclerosis, diseases of hyperlipidemia, myocardial infarction, multiple myeloma, or simply Benz-Jones proteinuria. Nephropathy for any reason can lead to the presence of albumin in the urine. Be careful because some factors might interfere with this lab test, including the drug oxytetracycline, which is one of the tetracycline antibiotics, and if I have infection or fever or blood or acid-base imbalance or strenuous exercise, all of these can give me a positive test even though I'm healthy, I do not have diabetes or any nephropathy. And that's why one positive test is not enough to doom the patient. This test needs to be repeated three times. If two out of three are positive results, then we call it significant, which means this patient will require annual screening using the urine microalbumin test. And it's a good idea to start ACE inhibitors right now to decrease the risk of kidney disease progression. I've told you before that ACE inhibitors are cool, but they are especially great in four conditions. Number one, diabetic nephropathy. Number two, scleroderma nephrosis. Number three, IgA nephropathy. Number four, henoch Schonlein purpura nephropathy. ACE inhibitors are so good for these four conditions. Does urine microalbumin carry any prognostic value? Yes. If I have high urine microalbumin and I am diabetic, this increases my risk of cardiovascular disease mortality and stage kidney disease and retinopathy five to ten times compared to the general population. What if I am not a diabetic? This is correlated with a shorter life expectancy to the point that some life insurance companies will order this test so that they can assess your risk of dying using their actuarial tables. Don't ever forget that microalbuminuria is the first sign of diabetic nephropathy. If you want to learn about diabetes during pregnancy, i.e. gestational diabetes, if you want to learn about preeclampsia, eclampsia, the infant of diabetic mother and his macrosomia, twin-twin transfusion syndrome, acute fatty liver of pregnancy, thyroid disease of pregnancy, and much more, download my OBGYN high yields course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. The topics of diabetic ketoacidosis and alcoholic ketoacidosis were discussed in great detail in my acid-base imbalance course. To learn about the glomerular filtration rate, the renal plasma flow, the micturition reflex, titratable acidity, renal clearance, etc., download my kidney physiology course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Genetics, where medicine makes perfect sense.